on an AD. Hey, come on. Like, we're the Warriors. We shouldn't be afraid of anyone. And if we're going to go out, and, and we, we didn't really get a chance to kind of get into this, but, like, I think most of us want Clay Thompson back, feel that he will be back. Are we sure about that? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, we sure most of us want Clay Thompson back. What are we doing? I, I, that's just my feel. I don't know. I'm sure there are people that. I don't. got a joke for you, Bonte. That because that to me sounds like a joke. Really? From the calls we've taken over the last few years yeah, and all the I messages think, we've read, I don't think that's and what we see online. I, it's a lot of for the first half of the season. How many people? You know how many people walked up to me on the street at a game, out and about. What's going on with Clay? We got to move on from Clay. I got on a flight to Vegas for the Super Bowl, and this guy was like, dude, we got to move on from Clay, man. He's holding the team back. I'm like, what? So I'm not so sure. But Clay alluded to some of his own in the Draymond podcast yesterday. He kind of alluded to his own um, whatever you want to call it, mental purgatory. Just he, he was kind of buffering himself emotionally and mentally over everything. I, I agree. You I know, agree and, and he's made the adjustment. And I think it's about yes. how you finish. Yes. You know, and so if they finish, you know, strong, I think everyone will be back around on on Clay Thompson's side. And I think I think the majority of, of Warrior fans want him back. I don't think the majority of Warrior fans care if what about the price point. They just want their they just want their players back. Mm, I don't know about that. Especially when it comes to the price point, that's been a stick, big sticking point. Yeah, Clay, just take the twenty, take take a deep uh, team discount, take the fifteen. So you think if he gets twenty seven here versus twenty one here, people care? Absolutely, that's all we've talked about the last two years. That's what you guys just told me, and I said, no, Clay's worth twenty five to thirty mil a year. Well, no, I think the and I think the, the team will give Clay Thompson thirty mil a year, and everybody pushes back saying, no, I shouldn't. Nope, nope. He should take a discount. He well, needs to take 20. He needs to take 18. He's like, the dialogue has been, what? Well, when Draymond got his money, you and I kind of critiqued the amount. What did you, like, I don't think we fielded a lot of calls from, it was an overpay. It was more like, oh, he's back. Let's go. No? Mm, I don't know, man. I I don't know. I think maybe people are feeling sad or, or they're, they're now embracing Clay Thompson because... He's come off the bench. He's playing a lot better. He's showing us his side. He's always shown us his human side. Like, Clay Thompson's been one of the best interviews in the Bay Area in a long time. Like, honestly, Clay Thompson always gives you something. And he's, he shoots you straight from the hip. He shows you how human he is. But I'm not so sure that every single Warrior fan will want him back or want him back at that price point of 25 mil per. I mean, unless things have changed over the last 40 hours, or uh, 48 hours or the last two weeks or the last two months because the conversations we've had and the conversations we've had with our listeners, it's mixed. It's a mixed bag when it comes to Clay Thompson. Now, I would love for him to be back because I think the Warriors need shooting. They need shooting. On a team that doesn't have a lot of shooting, they need that shooting. And the guy, I just, I'm just not cool with just letting 40% three-point shooters walk. That's not in the world I live in. But a lot of people don't agree with that. They don't. Any number that he takes below what he's getting now is a quote unquote pay cut, right? Like Wiggins took a pay cut. I don't think we talk about it at that much because he's not playing really well, you know, or wasn't up until recently right. playing really well. So I don't think the money mattered at all. Now, Jordan Poole, the second he got paid, what did people say? Overpay. So I think it's it's based on how you're playing. And so I think if he finishes the season strong, and the team finishes the, the the season strong. Even though Jordan Poole last year played for three and a half million dollars, I know. But what? <laughs> and you still got twenty points per game for three and a half million dollars. You and but I people, understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but a lot of people don't understand. Yeah, he no got doubt. the bag and he right. stopped playing hard. Right. He got the bag and he doesn't want to play defense. They overpaid for him. Like that's how people talk about these things. So I don't know. And I just think where where the team's at. Right. You know, right now, like. Whatever happens with Clay, notwithstanding, put that to the side. It could be the final few games of the core together. I want to see them go out on their own accord. I don't want to see them lay down on the sword and try to get a specific matchup. Whatever. Let's just let's just play these games as hard as we possibly can. Roll the ball out there and let the chips fall. And that, to me, is the way that they should go. So I'm seeing a couple here. Uh, four one five. Xfinity Mobile text line says Clay. 
got paid for two years. He should take two for 30 because of That's the injuries. That's not going to happen. Two for 30. That's not 15 gonna per. That's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> Clay was averaging 17 in the slump. I know. His lowest point was better than Wiggins right now. Uh, Dublin Marge had a good one here. Dublin Marge on YouTube. What up, Dublin? Hey. Dublin Marge. <laughs> I'm offering Clay three for 70. He has evolved this season. Early in the season, Clay was hurting the team. Would anybody have a problem with three for 70? No, I think that'd be pretty pretty reasonable. Pretty fair? Yeah. Three for 70? Let's go to Robin San that's, that's less than Draymond yeah, and Wiggins. I know, though. which is kind of crazy. I'll buy a couple mil. I don't think, I don't know. Yeah, it depends how you divvy it up. I mean, there's up. a higher. Yeah, like, yeah, no can we acknowledge on this team in this franchise with those guys, there is a hierarchy and a pecking order, and there is levels of respect. And I, I don't know, man. I, I I don't see him getting less than what Draymond got. I just don't. Rob is said, Bruno. The downfall is near, and it's coming hard. <laughs> what up, Rob? <laughs> hey, y'all laughing. Y'all laughing. I don't, I don't want to be in November. We over here crying about the season, bad. And, and, and Rob from San Bruno told y'all what was going to happen. But yeah, we don't going to worry about that when that's time. But all the hate play that took from the last two years was crazy. I don't care how bad you think he played. Clay always been Clay. He always going to let that thing fly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. So if I'm Clay Thompson, I'm looking at these – Fake fans, not all the Warrior fans, but the fake Warrior fans, the former L.A. Lakers fans, I, I, I'm gone. I'm going to Milwaukee. I, I, I play got play got action. He got Philly. He can go anywhere he want to go and, and get paid. So, and then I don't really. And then Steve Kerr, I'm looking at Steve Kerr like, man, you you like you was trying to, you know, decrease my pay or something. Got me on the bench for the other dude. Like, come on, man, Clay Thompson's a starter in the NBA. He's a championship piece. If you want a championship, you need a guy like Clay on your team. And I think other teams around the league will do that. And the Warriors have priced themselves out of Clay Thompson. That's Rob said, Bruno. I mean, are we sure that the Bucks are staying together? No. Well, that's, I mean, Doc well, that, Rivers well, is over here pointing well, fingers that, at well, everybody. Well, that's something I brought up on the show call because Jay Lakeup, do we have that when he's talking about big changes? Because we are, who, who knows when the offseason, the offseason can hit us next Wednesday. Hit us two Wednesdays from now. Who I'm, knows? I'm not mentally prepared for that. I'm not either. Though I do have a lot of paternity leave uh, left in the holster. Oh, wow. So you're going to leave me high and dry. <laughs> I wanted to season. see your face. Well, you know what? I wanted to see your face. Maybe I'll, I'll doctor a COVID-19 test and be out for 10 days. <laughs> COVID protocols. Zoom ain't working at home. Wi-Fi is shaking. <laughs> Wi-Fi is shaking. <laughs> <laughs> Matty Higgins not listening. Uh, <laughs> you, you know? I mean, that guy was sick for like three weeks straight. Exactly. And then he came in and coughed all over us. I know, and then I think he got me sick. Um, but I'm a, I recover quickly. My immune system is pretty good. You are like uh, Wolverine. Yeah, I am. I am. I am. I take these and Warriors checks. Well, you know, I got my Giants hat on. I'm Mr. Optimistic <laughs> over here. I'm not panicking over the What do you think, games. Randy Wynn? Right. Hey, Randy. <laughs> Hey, guys, you know what? He may be one for 30, but he is having quality at-bats. He is taking the pitchers deep into the count. Look at how he tapped this one back to the pitcher right here. <laughs> he got the barrel hole right there on the ball. It just he's went to the wrong way. Hey, he's had some bad at-bats. It's been bad. It's been bad. It's been bad. They're not gelling. It's been really bad. But big changes. Now, on the show call yesterday, here's Joe Lake. What is this, TK Podcast? This was from February when he was talking. I don't know. It was like some sort of event. But TK, we only have... TK talking about it, but this is Joe Lacob talking about payroll flexibility and being in a good position this summer. You know, we have expiring contracts this summer. We have a lot of flexibility as a result. Um, and that was pretty important given the changes in the CBA. You really can't have this kind of payroll in the future without being you know, severely impacted in terms of things you can do, as you know. Uh, and our fans know the second apron, you've all heard the words. It's all really true and it does impact us. So we're already in, in really good position for that this summer. We'll make decisions. Um, based, you know, on how we're doing and so on. But honestly, we had opportunity during this trade line. I don't think it's too much to say that we had a deal that would have saved us literally net, net uh, $80 million this, this year, not even next year. Uh, that's a pretty big thing not to do, I guess, if you're motivated by financials and financials, I guess, you know, in, in all honesty, as you said, in the face of, uh, you know, performing below expectations, which we have, up to this point this year, um, no one with a $400 million payroll wants to be a 500 team. And I certainly don't, but 
there are reasons for things and things do change. And so this is a this was a tough trade deadline. We had to make some pretty big decisions for the short term and take some gambles. And 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 we also had to maintain our flexibility going forward. So that's still like an honor to go to State Warriors. And you best believe that they don't even get out the playing round. I don't even know if they get out the first they don't even get out the first round. Changes will come. Do you think no. do you think people care? I'm gonna just pause right there. Like do you think people understand, just the average fan understands that they, they do need a lot of these home playoff games to offset the losses for how expensive the payroll is? That, that, but you get the concerts and you get the comedy acts, you get a little something, but you need, you need, you need some coin here. You need some coin. I think Bartend fans understand. Time for you to that. do the legal. Um, we'll do that in a second. I'm a pause on the legal. Uh, pause seems to be the word of the day. Uh, it's a shame. It's embarrassing. Well, I was going to get to with the whole payroll thing. Because I think fans, I, I want to give fans credit. I think they understand. We do know what, like, the second tax. apron the is second now. Apron. I have it on my, it's my pinned tweet. The second apron. First apron. It's all right there. Oh, I'm going to look this up. Yeah, no, it's all right there. But when it comes to big changes, there's always going to be a disgruntled superstar in this league. Every year seems to happen, right? Every year. Seems to be somebody, like last year, last season it was James Harden. He bolted Philadelphia. Went to the Clippers. I'm looking at the Milwaukee Bucks very, very, very closely in these playoffs. Microscope? Binoculars, microscope, you name it. Telescope, you name it. <laughs> telescope. <laughs> They've lost four games in a row. They lost four games in a row. Through the telescope, through the into telescope. the microscope, into the... Milwaukee I'm Green. picturing Bonte dressed as a pirate, too. He's on the <laughs> deck, and he pulls it out. He's just looking. I'm just there looking. Is. Telescope. Telescope Bonte. He's got it's the eye patch on. He's got, got, the, eye patch, got the eye patch, patch the binoculars, on. the parrot, the parrot, the parrot on yes, the shoulder. I got it all on. I got it all on. Shoulder. I got it all NBC, on. NBC, there's a graphic for you. There is a graphic. Oh, my God. Keep going. wearing an NBC jacket. Um, Bucks have lost four games in a row. Uh-huh. Lost to the Grizzlies, lost to the Wizards. They're not clicking. I know. Changing coaches didn't do anything. No, they actually got worse. <laughs> well, they shocking. got worse. I wonder why. What are they, 17 to 21 with Doc? They were, I think, 30 and 14 with Adrian Griffin. It could be wrong. Coach 30 and 13 or something like that. Ties right now. Cabo. <laughs> he's chilling. When are we so, going to revoke his Doc license? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm going to pull what I... He's Glenn Rivers, right? Yeah. <laughs> According to Howard Eskin. So they've lost four games in a row. <laughs> They're in the two C right now. If the playoffs started today, they would play the Philadelphia 76ers. I like the Sixers in that series. If the Bucks played the Miami Heat in the first round, which is very possible, I like the Miami Heat in that series. I do too. Is Giannis going to be able to take another first round exit? Oof. I'm not saying the Warriors are going to get Giannis. I'm not saying that. But what if he becomes disgruntled? Now, that's the big type of change I'm looking for. I think Lake of a Company would love to try to swing big. And I think they'll. They just, they, it, it, it was out there. They called about LeBron James. <laughs> I, I wonder what the deal was to save, quote unquote, $80 million to get under the cap. It must have been one of the $30 million contracts because then, you know, you don't get hit double or whatever. Maybe it's 20. Maybe it's Chris couple. Paul. Yeah, I was thinking like, maybe is it a Wiggins, GP2? Maybe it's Clay. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Who but, knows? Because like, we don't know what would have been offered for LeBron James. That's a great point. Who is offered for LeBron James? Point. Who do you think? <sighs> I have my suspicions. <laughs> um, so I'm looking at Giannis Antetokounmpo, and I'm saying I'm watching Milwaukee very closely. What happens in Milwaukee? Is this the summer Giannis says after signing the long-term deal, the extension, he's got his bag secured, he's good. We keep talking about LeBron and Steph. What if Milwaukee loses in the first round? Just saying. I'm just saying. That's a situation we should all be monitoring if we want big changes with the Go to State Warriors. If they don't, but now if they could make a run here and get to the West Finals, then what do you do?